the passionate commitment of the Lord Almighty will guarantee this! Huh? Hi, I'm Colby, and this is the story of how my brother and I failed to make a movie. It was December 2018. I was fresh off failing to get a job in London, which I tried after I failed to publish a novel, which I did after I failed to get a job during my last year in college. So, I moved back home with my parents in Kansas, and thought to myself, I should make a movie. Since it's December, naturally, I thought I should write a Christmas movie. But not just any Christmas movie. So the idea is, right, that you have the three wise men, but instead of being wise, they're actually stoners. And, instead of being set in the first century, it's set in modern day. But they're still traveling to Bethlehem to find the Christ. But Bethlehem, Arizona. This is Daniel. I teamed up with my brother because I knew I needed the best. Part 2, Friday. All joking aside, we were passionate about the idea of retelling the nativity story in a modern context because everyone in the U.S. has heard the story and it's so normalized. But if you've never heard it before, it's a really wild ride. Like three dudes see a star and then decide to travel across the Middle East to find a baby that created the universe. Let's follow that star. Like seriously, imagine if someone asks you for directions because they're trying to find the god baby that the star told them about. It's insane. I'm going to find the president of the universe. And the weirdest part is that somehow Americans hear this story and they identify as Mary and Joseph instead of, you know, maybe the large, wealthy, military superpower empire that persecutes minorities. So we sat down together in Dylan's Cafe on 6th Street and wrote together every morning for a couple of weeks and miraculously, we had a script. As Daniel and I sat at home watching the 91st Academy Awards, we knew who we needed to get that script in front of. Oh, the house! Charlie Wattel, David Rabinowitz, and Cameron Wilmot. The 2019 Academy Award winner for Best Adapted Screenplay, Kevin Wilmot. No, seriously, he actually did read our script. I mean, it helped that Daniel was taking his class, but seriously, he was incredibly kind and generous with his time, and we cannot thank him enough. But it's not like we had the best script or anything. We just asked it a lot. And then the big day came, we gathered our friends, and we had the big table read. This was our moment! The table read was the validation that we were great writers, the next Coen Brothers, the Academy Awards approval, God's approval, and he didn't really like it that much. Which is like, really disappointing. But he did tell us that if you're gonna make a movie, you gotta make a movie. At some point, you have to jump off that diving board. So we jumped off. Now, at this point, I'd only made one short film about talking plants. and one short film about a talking hedgehog. It's kinda a long story. And I made the plant one by myself because nobody thought talking plants were cool. Daniel had never been on set before. Well, besides the hedgehog short film. You haven't lived until you've heard the first scream of an ecstasy when a baby sea turtle gets into the ocean. So, we asked one of the senior film students on his advice and he said, Absolutely not. There are way too many characters and locations. Maybe try making some short films first, or a short film. Undeterred, we asked him to join us in our quest. Part 3. Filming. So we got to work gathering friends from film club and around the university. We called friends, acquaintances, and their acquaintances. We made a lot of calls. And a lot of people actually agreed to help. Our first day on set was a success. We decided to shoot a scene in the car because the film is structured as a road trip. It was a lot of fun and things went pretty smoothly. We were prepared with snacks, coffee, and a detailed shot list. So about that detailed shot list. We, at this point, didn't really know what a shot list looked like. And so we wanted to be really prepared and on top of it. So we went through an Excel and every single cut, we wrote a line. So a scene that maybe has three or four shots, an establishing shot, maybe two over the shoulder shots and another shot for coverage, that scene, just four lines. But we would have like 50 lines because every single time there was a cut for editing, we thought we needed to write a line there. Now, since we had no money, we could only shoot when everyone was available. This meant we couldn't shoot until the following week. And also, unfortunately, work schedules were decided late or last minute. So the second day we started late and ended late. Shooting for the third day was another week later, and we had moved last minute because our venue canceled. Fortunately, we made more calls and found an alternative. However, the audio equipment we rented from the university was missing an obscure but essential adapter, and an actor dropped out last minute so we had to find a replacement. 
Hello, Cormac. Uh, what brings you to jail? Well, necrophilia. It's kind of a long story. None of these issues by themselves are fatal, but they do wear down on team morale. It's difficult enough for anyone to find the time to create things for free when you have a busy schedule and need to work. It's a lot less fun to do that when the days are delayed and the product isn't what you expect. This made it more difficult to schedule going forward as people, understandably, would only commit if they thought everyone else was committed on that same day. But since the days moved around a lot, it was just difficult. Wait, 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 wait. We have got to talk about this church scene. It has nudity, violence, and a possessed baby. It's kind of a long story. We originally pitched it at a different church. The pastor said that he'd read it with his church board and they'd get back to us about letting us film there. The day before we're supposed to film, I get a text from the pastor saying that all 12 members have read the scene and unanimously agreed it would not be appropriate to film in their church. And I was like, wait, you got 12 people to read our script? You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. The fourth day was another week later. The audio is really bad here because it's just a working hotel. It's still driving through, so it's quite busy. Yeah, I know. We saw a lot of people on the highway. Just this census thing's pretty insane, don't you think? They were extremely generous to give us a room to film it, though. Again, though, organizing the entire cast and crew to come at the same time was very difficult when everyone needs to work and needs money. So if you can raise funds for it, definitely do. Overall, we didn't secure enough of the locations or secure enough of the cast and crew sufficiently in advance. And by the time August rolled around, we'd only completed about 40% of the film. People had to go back to school, some people moved across the country or started careers, and I actually got a job in London. So, we have 40% of a movie. Unfortunately, we didn't shoot in chronological order. It's just a collection of scenes that don't make a ton of sense in isolation. And that sucked because we had such high expectations. Part four, lessons learned. One, people are incredibly kind and generous. People gave a lot of their time and talent for free, often in the hot Kansas summer. We also got a lot of the locations for free, such as the hotel, church, and Christmas tree farm. Honestly, it's incredible that even one person wanted help with this project. I have so much gratitude for everyone involved in making this movie. Two, make the film that you want to make. Yeah, we could have made an easier to film script if we made it smaller, had less locations, fewer characters. But for whatever reason, we loved these characters and this is a story that we wanted to tell. It meant a lot to us personally. And it was so magical seeing these characters and these scenes come to life. Like it makes all of the late nights and just stressful work worth it. Three, don't be afraid of failure. Daniel and I, well, we don't have this film yet, but we learned so much throughout the process and it was one of the best experiences of our life despite it being really stressful, frustrating, and sad at the end that we didn't get a finished product. We learned so much throughout making this film. We learned how to like, write a scene that's actually filmable. We learned how to direct other actors. We learned how to communicate with cinematographers so they understand your vision for a scene. So even though with that we failed at making the film, I'm really glad that we tried.